What's up, Blog Tribe? Pete here from Do You Even Blog. In today's video, we are gonna walk through, step-by-step, step, the Elementor Table of Contents widget. It's super powerful. You can use it for single blog posts. You can make one and apply it across all your blog posts, across your entire site. You can design it however you want, and we're gonna walk through it step-by-step. Step. Let's go. So actually first, if you don't know what Elementor is, Elementor is a page builder plugin, but also does lots of other awesome widgets that you can put anywhere across your entire site. I use them for my homepage, as well as here's a FinCon local page I built in Elementor. I use them for short opt-in pages like this. You have form widgets, you have text, you have different backgrounds, you have lots of other funky interactive widgets like this. I built this entire 12,000 word blog post in Elementor. And in fact, my entire theme is built on Elementor header, footer. And today we're gonna find out how to utilize table of contents. Okay, first I'm gonna show you the actual element the table of contents, and then there are three ways to put it in your blog content. So first of all, I found this on the Elementor website. I'm just gonna model my design after this for now. I think this looks pretty good, some of these little things right here. So the first thing I really wanna mention, it can be useful to just go ahead and create one individual element, like a little section, a reusable template that you can use again and again and again. So I'm going to go to Elementor templates. I'm going to create a new one right now. So I'm gonna create a section for now. I'm just gonna name it T-O-C, D-Y-E-B, do you even blog? Create this. And it's gonna open up kind of like an ugly looking page with my header and my footer, but a little section right here where I can add, oh, I don't wanna use one of their pre-made ones. So let me close out of this. Okay, so I'm going to search for table of contents. There it is. The element right there. I'm just going to drag it into this section. And there we go. Now it's done, right? We could actually use this. We could actually drag and drop this. Uh, and it, it's pretty usable right out of the box. So it's important to note how this populates the individual items in the table of contents. It pulls it from your headers, your H2 subheads, H3, H4, H5, H6. This is highly customizable, but that is where it starts. And you can see that right here. Anchors by tags, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. I'm gonna actually remove some of these. I don't wanna do like uh, H5, H6. I'll just leave those right there. Also note that you can exclude certain elements. We're gonna get to that in just a second. Uh, I have an example here. You're gonna see like, wait, this is gonna happen. This is gonna like broken. I don't know how to fix it. I'm gonna show you how to use this exclude stuff in just a second. So you can rename it. Obviously I like stuff that says like jump to links or something like that, dot, dot, dot. HTML tag, you can make this be an H2, H3, H4. It's H4 by default. You choose what uh, anchor to include, anchors to include and exclude. You can also target only the main section of your content. You can target, you can add in footers if you wanna include that stuff in the table of contents as well. It's also worth noting that you have to have this on a blog post to actually preview it. So let's do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit publish. We're gonna come back and look at the settings and stylings in just a second. So I created two draft blog posts. One is just a normal post using my Gutenberg editor in WordPress, and the other one is using Elementor. So here is my test. Once I have saved the Elementor section, the template that I made just a second ago, the blank ugly one, I can now insert it. I do this using a plugin. You can also use a short code if you need to. You can see I have the Elementor library Elementor Blocks for Gutenberg, I think is the name of the plugin. Again, you don't need the plugin, but I just use it because it's easier. And once I have that, I should be able to select it. There we go, T-O-C-D-Y-E-B, and it's gonna pull through there and hopefully just work. I'm gonna hit Save Draft and let's preview what this looks like. Okay, it works. So ignore the pizzas, that's actually because some custom CSS that I have, but other than that, uh, it works, there we go. You'll see it's also targeting this leave a reply, cancel reply, what is this, why is that? That's not in my blog post. Oh wait, it's my comments. So how do I exclude that? Because you're gonna wanna do that. It's also pulling my cookie consent pop-up, which I don't even see uh, right now. That's kind of odd, but you can exclude these things. But these are pulling in nicely. Again, ignore the formatting for now. I have custom CSS that's throwing that off. You probably won't see that. What you wanna do for excluding things really quick, right click, inspect, and find a class or ID element. I'm sorry if you don't know HTML and CSS, that might be more difficult, but in general, I see this has an ID of reply title, so I'm gonna exclude that back in my section. I'm gonna go back here, click exclude, type reply dash title with my hashtag, which signifies it's a CSS uh, 
syntax. And I should be able to come back here and just refresh the post and that will be removed. Oh, there we go, it worked. So this is just a section, I haven't even styled it yet, but now I can rinse and reuse that. I can throw it in blog posts and it works fairly well, right out of the bat. So obviously another way to use this is if you're actually building a blog post in Elementor. I do this for my mega posts that are like super, super long. So it could be like engaging and some background colors on this section and different sections and different columns. I get fancy with that sort of stuff. And you can also just include it as an element. To show you what I mean, I've created a little fake blog post right here. I just added in an image, a little text section with some headers and filler stuff, etc. I'm going to add it in right here. Table of contents. I'm just going to drag it over here to this other column. Let's leave it here and see what happens. And there we go. Isn't that cool? I love that. This looks really good. It, it works really well. Let's learn about styling just a little bit. I'm actually going to move my face. Whoa! Oh, that was crazy, man. No, so right off the bat, there are numbers and bullets. You can actually customize the bullets to be whatever the heck you want, actually. You could choose no icons. That's what that looks like. But you have a whole icon library for stuff you can search for. You can also upload your own, of course. Ooh, 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 ooh. What about pizza? Pizza, they have a pizza icon, it's so great. I'm going to just use pizza icons because that's what I do. And additional options. So you can see how this is wrapped or not wrapped, or no, it is wrapped. It's on two lines right there. If you click word wrap, it'll just make everything on one line and cut the sentences off a little bit. It could be cleaner depending on what you're going for. You could choose to minimize that box or not, like give the option to minimize. You can also choose whether or not it's automatically minimized on tablet or mobile. I'm gonna leave mine automatically open like this on tablet, but on mobile, I'm gonna keep it minimized and here's what that looks like. Well, it's actually open at the moment. It'd be like that. <laughs> there we go. You can choose to not have it hierarchical, as in that was an H2, this is an H3. It was indented a little bit. You can choose to do that or not. And you could make it uh, collapsible sub items where I would click on this and it would collapse this guy. I'm not gonna do that right now, but you could do that. All right, let's style this bad boy. I'm excited, are you excited? I'm excited. So background color. Uh, you could do a number of things here. I'm gonna do white. I am going to get rid of borders, by the way. I didn't like that border by default. You can see that, I don't like that. So I'm actually going to just remove the border. I'm gonna put border zero. Okay, that should click away. Yeah, okay, I got rid of the border right there. So I want to do a little box shadow. I love box shadows around the entire thing. Let's like bump it down to just barely visible. Cool, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, now you can see there's nice little shadow around the thing now. I like the way that looks. So minimum height, you could make it, you know, a minimum height. I don't really like that. I'm just gonna like delete that. It needs to be as tall as it needs to be. Padding, I do wanna add a little bit more padding. Why don't we just uh, bump this up right there. That looks good to me. Uh, border radius, uh, you could do that. We could do a little bit of curvature there. There we go. Header, I actually want to do a different background color. So let's go with like a purple and let's do text white on top of that. That looks pretty good. I like the way that looks. Icon, marker, marker. There we go, marker, purple. And I wanna increase the size just a little bit. Yeah, nice little pizza bumps there. See, this is looking good to me. Maybe a little bit more spacing here, oh, whatever. That's good. Typography, you could change the fonts and the font size and stuff like that. Hover active, and you see how I hover over these. What it means by active is if I make this sticky, which I want to like stay at one point in the page, you know what I mean? I would click this. Oh, we're already selected, there we go. I would come over here to motion effects, sticky top. There we go, that way it'll just like, well it should. There we go, it just took a second. It is sticking to the top. This is a very short blog post because it's kind of hard to see. And you can also do offset. Like I would like to bring it down just a little bit. Something like that. Effects offset, no, stay in column. Entrance animation, you could do that too, etc. I don't want to make it sticky on mobile, so I'd probably delete that. Mouse effects, scrolling effects, no. I don't need any of that stuff. So if you have a really long blog post, as people scroll through here, you can make it highlight which section they're at, which is really cool. Let's see if we can do that. So table of contents over here, I'm gonna to go to list. 
active. Let's make the text color like uh, darker purple maybe, or just purple. Yeah, okay, so you see this is now purple because we're at there. If we scroll down, it'll work hopefully once we preview the page, but that'll highlight uh, where you're at in the page, where your readers are at, that's pretty cool. So top of this, my God, we already colored all this stuff. Hover, you could just do purple. I'd probably do purple. There we go. Active, underline, just to like. So that is pretty much the entire widget. Again, you can customize pretty much everything about it. <laughs> you see I added padding, I did the color background up here, made the border radius, I changed the way the icons look and so on and so forth. That's pretty much the entire widget. Actually, here is a really cool sort of unrelated Elementor trick, but if you build this in a single blog post, here's a neat trick to save your time later. Earlier I created a section. This should be noted that you can also just right click on this actual table of contents element. I've already got it the way I look. I want to use this. I'm just going to right click and do save as global, save as global. I'm gonna rename it super purple table of content, super purple TOC, I'm gonna save that. Now I can just insert this straight from the Elementor like element when you're like building a page or anything, you can just search for that global, the custom one that you saved and just insert it and it'll work everywhere across your entire site. Pretty cool. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is how to implement this in the Elementor theme builder where you can use it across your entire site. If you have a custom blog post format layout design, you can throw this in there and it'll just automatically populate the information across all of your blog posts. It is super fancy. So right now, I am working on a new blog post template. I'm gonna open that up and show it to you. It's not even live yet. This is your first look? No, I am working on this design right here and let's say I want to add a table of contents widgets to every blog post across my entire site in one fell swoop, right? I am going to preview this just to show you kind of what it looks like. It's not done yet, it's not perfect by the way, don't judge me. Uh, this needs to be like a little cleaner I think, but in general, like here is what the thing looks like. This is what my table of contents used to look like. This was done manually with an HTML div and CSS and oh my gosh, it was kind of a pain. So I am gonna like redo this theme and I'm gonna put it like right over here somewhere, a nice little table of contents. So I could search for one and build one from scratch, just throw it over there, but why would I do that? I've already done it, remember? I have globals, global, 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 super, super purple TOC. So what we just created, I'm gonna drag this guy over here. I can officially be done. I've already styled it. I might change it because this is a different looking page. I'll need to update, see how it's like not quite, this is like a little, a little much over here. It's not wide enough or something. But right off the bat, let's see what this looks like. There it is. That's pretty cool. And you see it sticks there. Okay, so I see a few problems here. For one, this is a long blog post. Let me move myself out of the way. Watch out. Oh, okay. Um, you can see, I don't even, I can't even get to the bottom of the, the thing over here, like the, the table of contents, because it's so long. So I need to figure out what can I do to fix that? First of all, it's sticky right now. Maybe we should change some things up. So I'm actually going to unlink this so I can edit it from, uh, it's no longer going to be part of the global element. It's just going to be like a regular old element. There we go. So let's see what we can do here. First, I'm gonna make it sticky a little bit more towards the top of the page. Motion effects, it's already sticky. I'm gonna like decrease this, make it a little bit taller, just a little bit. Cool, right there. So let's go to style, box. Let's decrease the padding just by a few bumps. That already helped just a little bit. Let's go to list and change the typography just a tiny bit. That's a little better. Let's update that and just see what it looks like right here. Hang on, I'm moving over here. Wow! Okay, so right off the bat, that's a lot better. You can see, I can, I, I can almost get to the bottom of that. I can almost get to the bottom of that. Maybe I just don't make it sticky. By the way, I have an entire video, which I will link to right here, about using Elementor as your theme, using the theme builder for different uh, parts across your site, different blog post theme templates, like I'm showing you right here, headers, footers, everything, pop-ups, I show you all that stuff and more in that video, so go check that out. So I think you get the point. I think this is a really, really, really cool element and worthy of use by most bloggers, whether that's using a theme builder or just building one little section and then just using it wherever you want to, whenever you need to, via Elementor shortcodes or that plugin that I use, I don't even remember the name of it, you can go Google it, I'm sure. 
uh, super handy, really great for users and readers as well, and could be good for SEO too. Helping people navigate the content, stay on the page longer. Without further ado, I will uh, sign off on this video. If you want to see more Elementor comment, uh, content, drop me a comment. Let me know what you need help with. If you have any ideas for content, I'm more than happy to produce it. Thank you for watching. As always, do you even blog tribe? And I will see you next time. Adios.